Hello everyone. This video presents some of simulations, some of block diagrams we used for the scalar control in induction motors drive and control course. In this course, we use the MATLAB software, the ANSYS Simplorer, the Twin Builder, and also we use the ANSYS Maxwell to design the drive and also to control the induction motors. So, why we use MATLAB, ANSYS Simplorer, and ANSYS Maxwell? Using MATLAB, we can do the simulations fast, right? As you can see here, we use the lumped parameter model of the motor. Here I used this lumped parameter model. In this course, we have two benchmark motors. We discussed the ratings in detail during the course. Here I applied this linear load to this motor. So, this is the open loop control, the VF control of the induction motor. Using MATLAB, we can use a fine time step size and use the lumped parameter of the motor to run the simulations and also to set the parameters of the controller, the PI controller, for example. Here, as you can see in this closed loop VF control. Using Simplorer, we repeat the same simulations. So here this design is for the closed loop control of the induction motor, the VF control. And this is for the open loop control. Finally, we can replace the lumped parameter model of the motor with the real model, the finite element model, as you can see here in this simulation. Here I have the finite element model to run the simulation and check the waveforms. However, this simulation is more time consuming because we use a fine time step here in this side, but we have the finite element model. This is a powerful method, especially for motors like the switched reluctance motor, right? In that case, we have a complex model. If we want to use the lumped parameter version of the switched reluctance motor, and that is good if we implement this strategy there. So anyway, this is the workflow that we use in the induction motors drive and control course. First we use MATLAB, then we use the simplorer, and finally we replace the lumped parameter model with the finite element model to do a coupled simulation using the Simplorer and ANSYS Maxwell to final tuning of the PI controller and driver parameters. So, let's review the results for this case for the scalar control. Here we have the reference speed, the yellow one, and the blue one is the rotor speed. As you know, in open loop method, the VF control, we have this difference because we don't have any feedback from the rotor speed and we didn't use the PI controller. Here we add this PI controller 
to reduce that error to zero. Here we implemented this control part here. Actually, we get feedback from the rotor speed and adjust the angular slip, right? The slip in its angular electrical degrees version. We discussed this detail in the course. And here is the result. So the yellow one is the reference speed and the blue one is the rotor speed. Also, you can refer to videos that are about the tests in the same playlist that we have. So here you can see the negative slope of the speed and this is the positive slope. The, when the slip error is zero, we have match between the rotor speed and the reference speed. So when this step is okay and we can get acceptable results in MATLAB, we can move forward and use the simpler. Here I repeated the same simulations. First, I did a line start simulation just to check if everything is okay and we can get correct waveforms for the line start operation of the motor dynamic simulation. And to confirm that, we have set the parameters of the motor correct. Then I implemented the open loop control, right? This is different from what we have in MATLAB. Uh, some of blocks are different, but the methodology is the same. Here you can see the reference speed. The green one. Here we have the rotor speed, right? And also the reference speed. The reference speed is the red one, and this is the rotor speed. The same graph that we have here in the open loop control of the MATLAB. Okay. Then we repeat the closed loop control. Here you can see the waveform of the voltage, the reference speed, and this is the reference speed and the rotor speed, right? The same results that we have here for the closed loop control of the motor, this one that we get, okay? So this is good because we can generate results using two different softwares. So when this is correct and we can generate same results using the simpler error, finally we can replace the lumped parameter model of the motor using the real model, the finite element model. Here I used the fraction model to do the simulations fast. Okay? So this simulation is more time consuming because the time step size here is low and the simulation, the finite element simulation is time consuming for each time step size. And we should perform this kind of simulation after two previous steps. Okay. So here I did this simulation and here this is for the closed loop control and here you can see the waveforms of the reference speed and also the rotor speed this is really interesting that we can use the finite element model in this block diagram so you can check transients saturations right and also the total losses of the motor right as you know, in the lumped parameter version, it's complex to include the effect of iron losses, right? Or the effect of the non-uniform distribution of the current in the rotor bars 
but in this case we can include all of those effects that is really powerful so you can set the parameters for example for the maximum efficiency right it's complex if we want to do this kind of designs using matlab yes because we need to implement a very complex model of the motor here that is not needed yes so we can use these softwares in parallel to design the driver and also to adjust the control parameters that we will discuss in detail in this course so these block diagrams were for the scalar control and in the next videos i will present the block diagrams that we use for the vector control of the motor so thanks for watching